Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin. This is Life, Liberty, and Levin. Brandon Strzok. Hi. How are you, my friend? I'm great to be here. It's spelled well. Strzok, but it's Strzok. Is that correct? You nailed it. So I'm the first one to get it right. You're one of the first. All right, America. It's Strzok. <laughs> and I want you to remember that name because it's a very important guest and a very important interview, which is why I wanted to have you on the program. You, Brandon, have started a movement called the Walk Away Movement. Yes. So let's start at the beginning. What is the Walk Away Movement? Well, we, so we started as the Walk Away Campaign, and it initially began as a social media campaign. Uh, I'm a former uh, Democrat, a former liberal. I always voted Democrat my entire adult life. And, um, you know, I'm a gay man. And so I, it really, for me, was I, I kind of call myself a Democrat by default because I think that the Democratic Party does this incredible job of marketing themselves toward minority groups in America and telling us that we need them and telling us that we're in danger constantly from people on the right, that Republicans hate us, that conservatives hate us and wish to do us harm. And they've got the liberal media machine backing them up. So for me, it was kind of a no-brainer. I'm a gay man. I'm a liberal. I'm a Democrat. And I think that that's sort of the auto pilot kind of thinking that most minorities in America go into. And uh, well, I think we'll probably get into the story, but essentially after the 2016 election, I... You voted for Hillary. I did. I voted for Hillary Clinton. So how recently did you convert? Well, so after the 2016... What, what happened that caused you to convert? Like most people, when Donald Trump announced that he was running for president, I thought it was a joke. I was laughing right along with everybody else until it got to be around the primary and it became very clear that he was probably going to be the Republican candidate. And then all of a sudden, things got really scary because again, that liberal media machine that targets you know, people like me and I think other minorities started using our identities against us because this is what they do. What, what, did, what did you think Donald Trump was going to do to the gay community? <laughs> well, I mean, they were telling us that, you know, his running mate Mike Pence was this raging homophobe who was going to try to uh, mandate conversion therapy for gay people. I mean, there were people talking about putting gay people in co concentration camps. I mean, I know it's, it's so laughable now, but at the time it was really, really scary because as absurd as it seems to me at this point, I really believed everything that the liberal media told me. I mean, I believed that he called all Mexicans rapists. I believed that he advocated for the sexual assault of all women. And so as he was gaining popularity and we were leading up to election day, I'm sitting here like I think many liberals and Democrats going, what is going on with conservatives in this country? What is, like, who are all these covert bigots that we didn't understand that we were living amongst? Because you have to remember, too, we had just had eight years of Barack Obama. And so the, the liberal media never told us that he did anything wrong. I mean, they, they talked about a scandal-free presidency. They talked about, you know, the, this amazing savior for eight years. And they never even really reported to us much about people on the right having issues with Obama. I mean, we just thought that this guy could do no wrong. So when all of a sudden we have, according to them, the world's biggest bigot uh, vying for the highest office in the country and he has all of this support, we're going, what is happening? So election day rolls around and, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't terribly concerned because the same liberal media told me that he had a 3% chance of, of winning, so there was nothing really to be afraid of. Well, boy oh boy, did we get a surprise on election day, right? So I was one of those people. How did you feel? Oh, I was shattered. Shattered. I mean, I, was, I remember sitting at home watching the election results roll in, and if you'll recall, it went into the night. It was, you know, they didn't call it early, so... I ended up going to bed because I was getting so nervous, I just couldn't take it, but I couldn't sleep. So I, I was rolling over like every 15 minutes and you know, going to the world's most reliable source, the Huffington Post, to see uh, you know, what, because I know they wouldn't lie to me. So I was trying to see what they would say. And finally, I think somewhere around 2, 2, 2 15 in the morning, uh, there's Donald Trump's picture with a giant red banner on the Huffington Post that said, Nightmare, President Trump. And then underneath the picture it said, millions to lose health insurance, civil rights to be rolled back, dot, 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 and other possible headlines from a Trump presidency. So they started scaring us with fake headlines literally immediately after, like, the moment that he got elected. But still it wasn't clear to me. I wasn't seeing, you know, what they were doing. I was just scared to death, scared to death. So I got on Facebook the next day, and I made a video crying, literally crying, saying, you know, like, what, why? What, did, what were you guys thinking? Why did you do this? 
And um, I spent the next couple of months. Meaning, meaning why did all you deplorables vote for him? Yeah. Yeah, and it, see, it's, it's important maybe to mention that I grew up in a rural community in Nebraska, a little tiny farm town called O'Neill, Nebraska. And so um, a lot of my friends on Facebook and family members and people I grew up with, I knew that they had voted for Trump, even though they hadn't actually stated I knew. And so I was just like, how could you do this? How could you do this to me? How could you do this to people like me? What, you know, what were you thinking? How could you do it to America? What were you thinking? And um, so for about two months, I was posting like this and nobody would answer me. And uh, it was about two months exactly after the election at the end of January of 2017, I wrote a post in which I said, you know, for the life of me, I will never be able to understand how you could watch this man stand before a cheering crowd and mock a reporter's disability and still go into that voting booth and pull the lever for him. What is wrong with you? And, and the media push that scene at that rally over, over, over again. I remember vividly being at the gym and looking up, because you know they don't play Fox News at the gym or at airports, it's always CNN, always mm -hmm. CNN everywhere you go. So I remember being at the gym and looking up at the, the CNN on the screen and seeing him frozen in that position with the banner underneath that said, uh, Donald Trump uh, mocks disabled reporter. And um, so I put this post on Facebook and finally somebody answered me. Uh, it was a woman named Diane who was my babysitter when I was a baby, and uh, she staunch Christian conservative. She and I had many battles over the year, years on Facebook, uh, but I never unfriended her as I did so many other conservatives who I'd had arguments with. I didn't unfriend her, and she wrote to me privately, and she said, listen, I don't want you to like rip me a new one. I'm just asking, have you seen this? And she sent me a video, a YouTube video entitled, Debunking that Trump Mocked the Disabled Reporter. Now, I saw this video and I became instantly enraged just reading the title because I thought, oh, here we go, more like right-wing propaganda, more brainwashing. And then I got almost exhilarated. I was like, I can't wait to watch this and tell her how stupid she is for falling for this propaganda. So I played the video and it was about six or seven minutes of footage of Donald Trump doing that exact same voice and that exact same gesture as he did that day when he mocked the reporter's disability. But the common thread in all of these different scenes throughout the years was that he was imitating someone who was caught in a lie or imitating somebody who was groveling because they had done something shady. And I watched it and, and Mark, I'm telling you, it was, it was the strangest experience I've ever had in my life. I, I almost sort of dissociated for a moment because there was this disconnect between my brain and my heart because my brain was telling me, oh my God, I don't think that he mocked that reporter's disability. My heart was saying, but we hate him, but we hate him, but we hate him. And so I couldn't reconcile within myself what had happened. And so I shut my computer. I watched it three times and I couldn't figure it out. So I went to bed, woke up the next day and I watched it again. And I thought, okay, he didn't. He didn't mock that reporter's disability, but why did CNN tell me that he did? Because CNN has never lied to me before. So why did they start lying today? You know, I couldn't figure it out. So I started asking these questions and going to, you know, I live in New York City now, so I started going to other liberals, friends, coworkers, saying, have you seen this? Have you seen this? And I was instantly met with this wall of hostility and, and, and contempt almost. People were saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? What, so you love Trump now? What are you doing? I said, I don't love Trump. I'm just trying to understand this doesn't make any sense to me. They were very angry at me for even asking questions. Now, I thought this was strange because I thought, here we are, we're upset all the time because he's been elected, we're crying, we're, we're, we're terrified. Here I am coming to you with this little piece of evidence that says, that suggests maybe things aren't as bad as they seem, but you don't want to believe that maybe things aren't as bad. You want to be angry. I thought this is very interesting. But the point is that it became very clear to me that I wasn't safe asking these questions because people didn't want to have this conversation. So I started getting in bed every night after I was working and just watching videos on YouTube or reading stories, trying to understand, you know, researching the media, taking moments out of context. And what I found was fascinating. Um, I found videos of black people showing up for Trump rallies to support him. And when they showed up, CNN would cut them out of the shot so that it appeared that there were only white people there. Um, I, I watched the him calling Mexican, all Mexicans rapists speech 
and, and saw once again that they had taken that moment out of context, and that wasn't at all what he was saying. He didn't say anything negative about Mexicans in general. He was talking about some people being released from prison and coming over the, the border. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I started to see my and, God. And by the way, let me just, it, it reminds me of Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. And they continue to push this racism argument that he was saying both sides have an argument. He was endorsing the Klan and the neo-Nazis. That's not what he did. Not at all. He was saying both sides of good people pro or con those monuments. Yes. That there are arguments to be made, and you don't have to be a racist to right. say leave the monuments alone. A lot of people believe you shouldn't be book burning, you shouldn't be pulling down monuments and so forth. But even today, CNN and MSNBC try to create the notion that somehow he's a white supremacist. Yes, yes. Anyway, you were saying. Yeah, no, but that's a perfect example. And, and, and interestingly, with Charlottesville, I had already at that point had my eyes open. That actually happened after these events. So that was one of the first examples that I was experiencing in real time. Because now I saw, I was like, I see what they do. And it's the kind of thing, once you see it, you can never unsee it. Once you realize what they're doing, you see it every single time. So when Charlottesville happened, I already knew. And I was like, aha, they're doing it again. They're doing it again, because you're right. He certainly did not say, oh, the, you know, the neo-Nazis and the KKK, great people. No, no, no. He was saying there were also historians mixed in with these people who were just simply uh, protesting to preserve or history. Or free speech people. Leave everything Absolutely. alone and the warts and all and let the American people sort it out. Right. Don't pull monuments down. Don't burn books. We, we're smart. We can figure these things out. Yes. And the stains are important to know about. Yes. You no, know, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's a Confederate general who did this, 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 this. Right. And that's important to know, isn't it? That's absolutely important to know. When we come back, as I listen to you, mm -hmm. I want to get more into this movement and more of what you're doing, because I think it's crucially important. Thank you. I want to talk about the media. Not just to talk about the media and hit on the media, but what you seem to be saying to me is, I was brainwashed. I was brainwashed, social media, by all these people, by CNN, by MSNBC, they keep pushing this agenda. The media, are they giving us news? Are they giving us propaganda? I want to ask you that when we return. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, almost every weeknight, you can watch me on Levin TV, Levin TV. Go to blazetv.com slash mark to sign up, blazetv.com slash mark, or give us a call at 844-LEVIN-TV, 844-LEVIN-TV. We'll be right back. Brandon Strzok, I want to get to the media part in a second, mm. but I want you to finish. You come to this realization yes. that you've been played, that you've been manipulated. Right. Now suddenly you see a light, mm -hmm. the light of liberty. Yes. But you've created this movement, so finish your story for us. Well, so as I was, you know, getting into bed every night and doing more research, you know, as anyone who use, uses YouTube knows, you start off with one video and then you end up in a rabbit hole and it's four days later and you've missed work and you're still watching videos. And, you know, so I would start off kind of watching these things about the media and then eventually it would lead me to, you know, Ben Shapiro speeches, um, uh, Ann Coulter, Milo Yiannopoulos, all these different conservatives who in the past I wasn't even willing, you know, Tucker Carlson, who I love more than God himself now, you know, I wasn't even willing to look at these videos before. I would just see Tucker's bow tie and I'd be like, next, next, you know, but like suddenly I was like listening for the first time and I was like, my God, the, the conservative point of view makes so much more sense than all of this identity politics, political correctness, divisive, divisive, divisive nonsense that I've been going along with in lockstep for so many years. And um, so then it became more and more difficult. This is when I thought to myself, oh my God, I think I'm becoming a conservative. Or maybe I always was, I, I don't know. But I, I reached this point by 2018 where I was willing to say, I'm a conservative. And I don't, you know, as a gay man, I've done the closet before. I, I've done the, you know, hiding my head in shame and denying who I am. I'm not doing it again. I'm not going back for round two. So I was like, you know, I'm going to wear this conservatism proudly and I'm not going to be silent about it. And I don't want, I see the way that Trump supporters are being treated. I see the way that conservatives are being treated. And I want, I do not want to allow that to happen either if there's anything I can do about it. So I came up with this idea to shoot a six minute video. I jokingly call it the definitive manifesto of everything that's wrong with liberalism and the Democratic Party. Once upon a time, I was a liberal. In an effort to gain voters and maintain power, the Democratic Party that I once loved has joined forces with the extremist left. 
The Democratic Party and the liberal media now believe their own ill-gotten conclusions and have ominously decided that they, and only they, know the remedy for society's ills. So I am walking away. And I encourage all of you to do the same. Walk away. I put this video out on social media, but I realized that there was a larger purpose here. It wasn't just enough for me to tell my story and to kind of uh, you know, punch through that wall of, I'm going to boldly wear my conservatism and not be ashamed to denounce the Democratic Party and liberalism. I know there are millions of other people who are feeling exactly the same way I'm feeling too, that their party has left them, that the Democratic Party has become a party of rage and hate and lies and the liberal media machine that backs them up. They're, they're sick of it, people are tired of it. So I created something that I called the walkaway campaign. I encouraged other people to also make their videos and put them out there so that we could create almost this uh, internet uh, community of support. And I, I dreamed that it would be a big deal, but I didn't really know. I didn't know how people would react. I created a Facebook group and I said, look, use the hashtag walkaway and make your videos and talk about why you're walking away from the Democratic Party. It exploded. And what I also told people too was, you know, going back to sort of my, my uh, story of how this all happened, for months, I was reaching out on social media saying, you know, why did you guys do this? No one would answer me. So I said, listen, it's time for the silent majority to become unsilent. We need people on the right to be making their testimonials too, reclaiming the narrative of what it means to be a conservative. So we have what we call the walkaways, and we have what we call the walk withs, who are those who walk with those who walk away. Those are the conservatives. And thousands of people started making their testimonials. And at this point, the group has grown to over 400,000 on all wow. social media platforms. We have tens of thousands of testimonials and it's become a massive movement. It's a very real thing. Hashtag walk away. Do you think people who are brainwashed or mesmerized by the modern day media, do you think more and more people are capable of that? Yes, because, and I'm living proof of that. I, if we could get into a time machine and go back two years ago and this person could meet the former me, the former me would think that pod people had taken over and uh, that you know somebody had stolen my brain. But it's, it, yes, if, if I can change, anybody can change. And we are gonna change, and we have changed. I mean, since I started Walk Away, I get messages by the hundreds, sometimes by the thousands saying, because of this campaign, my eyes have been opened. We are going to change minds and we are going to change hearts. But we're so much more now than just a social media campaign. One of the things of many that we're going to do going into 2020 and beyond is education. And one of the things I wanna do is create a video series, a very excellent quality video series, debunking media lies and myths and teaching people how to be skeptical again when they're watching the news, teach them how to be analytical and see for themselves, as I said before, once you see it, you can't unsee it teach them to realize what's, what's being done to them, the brainwashing, so that they see, ah, they're doing it again. Ah, they're doing it again. Because, you know, they don't, they don't care about news. What they care about is a narrative. And right now, the most important thing to them is pushing the narrative of, of division through racism, homophobia, Islamophobia, xenophobia, any phobia that you can think of. So they start with a conclusion. The conclusion is, uh, you're a bigot. The conclusion is you're a racist. Then they work backwards and they, they, they go out and they seek out anything that they can spin as evidence to support that conclusion. They're not going out looking for stories. They're looking for little sound bites that they can use to support the, the conclusion that they've already come to. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Yeah. We'll be right back. This is a Fox News alert from America's News Headquarters. I'm Aisha Hasni. An Alabama sheriff says at least 14 people are dead from a possible tornado some 100 miles southwest of Atlanta. Several people are still missing as crews search through the wreckage and the debris. A local coroner now says he expects that death toll to rise to at least 20. The damage is being described as catastrophic in the community of Beauregard. The state's governor, Kay Ivory, tweeting this out earlier today. Our hearts go out to those who lost their lives in the storms that hit Lee County today, praying for their families and everyone whose homes or businesses were affected. Officials from Alabama EMA and other agencies are quickly working to provide assistance. The governor also warning about the possibility of more severe weather overnight. I'm Aisha Hussey. Now back to Life, Liberty and Levin.
Brandon Strzok, mm -hmm. Donald Trump, you despised him. His election almost ruined your life, you felt. What do you think of him today? Love him. You love Donald Trump? I love Donald Trump. Tell us why. Well, for so many reasons. First of all, I think he's doing a spectacular job as president. Uh, I love that he's a, a rebel and a revolutionary, and I think that he is... This is what is so disappointing to me about this, this period that we're living in right now. If, if liberals and Democrats could just let go of the hatred, I mean, we're, this could be the most fun, enjoyable time, one of the most in our nation's history. I mean, Donald Trump is the president. When are we ever going to get this time back, you know? But it's, it, they can't enjoy it, and they're, they're, they're making themselves miserable. They're making us miserable. But, you know, another reason I think I love him is because once, and again, I say once you see it, you can't unsee it, once you see clearly what they're doing to him and the way that they're maligning him and lying about him and, and just assassinating his character on a daily basis and going after his family and going after his children, going after... You realize, I, I have such a deep admiration for this man at this point that he's willing to endure this because newsflash, he doesn't need to. He doesn't need the money. He doesn't need the fame. He doesn't need the attention. I mean, this guy could be retiring and, and enjoying this time with his grandchildren and, and enjoying his wealth and traveling the world. He's doing this because he loves the American people and he cares about this country. And so when I look at somebody who's willing to just, you know, just get smacked around as much as he does and, and, and still keep taking it and doing it for the American people, I have nothing but admiration for the man. How are you received <laughs> in the so-called gay community? They don't, I think, yet understand what it is that I'm doing. And that's kind of the attitude that I try to take, is that despite any treatment that I may be receiving right now, which is obviously not favorable, um, I think that in time, uh, the gay community and, and liberals in general are going to have a clear understanding of what it is that I'm trying to do. Because, see, what it is right now is that, uh, so many are still stuck, with, I think, again, because of the liberal media, uh, in this mindset that if you're a conservative, you wish to do harm to the gay community, or you wish, to, you know, if you're a Republican, it's because you hate gay people. Not only have I not found that to be true, I've been warmly embraced by conservatives, and I mean, I, I, I'm leading this, this kind of phenomenal movement, and nobody has come up to me and said, you know, I really love your movement, but you're gay, so I just, I can't get on board. Like, that hasn't happened, and it's not, you know, it's only growing and growing. And so what I really want the gay community to see is that I'm largely trying to empower them. Same with black people, same with brown people, same with all of these other targeted groups in the, the left, the, the, the Democratic Party. I want them to see that the world has changed. You know, and, and, and this is, I think, I th another important point. It's not as if uh, oppression is a, a fallacious concept. I mean, our nation has a dark history, you know, in the way that we have treated black people, the way that we've treated brown people and women and LGBT people. But I want to focus on where we are today. I want to let go of the past and live in the present and, and look to the future, which at this point, I don't believe that we live in a time where we are oppressing minorities in America anymore. It just isn't happening. And that goes for the gay community as well. I want them to see, hey, guys, like, let's move on. Let's forgive and move on. Because I think at this point, we should be worrying about empowering ourselves as individuals and not sticking within these groups and seeing ourselves as victims. But some people are heavily invested in being victims. It's their identity. Some groups are invested, front groups. Mm -hmm. They get a lot of money to promote victimhood. That's right. And the louder they are, the more radical they are, the more outrageous they are, the more they draw media attention and headlines and so forth. It's sort of a very vicious cycle. Right. And what you seem to be saying to me is, let's get off the hamster wheel, let's start to pay attention to what's actually going on, put the brainwashing aside, right. and let's embrace our individuality and our liberty, regardless of who you are or what you are, which is a quintessential conservative message. Absolutely. And what you're describing is what I call the oppression industry. Mm -hmm. It's an industry that exists by constantly making people feel like they're in danger, constantly making them feel like they uh, don't have the same rights or uh, advantages or opportunities as other people in this country. And after they get done delivering that message, then they say, and click here to donate, please. Uh, so yeah, what I want is for people to see that uh, you know they can embrace their individual identity. And it's not like these things aren't extremely important. They are. I mean, if I look at my own community, the gay community, 
uh, we have an astronomical HIV rate in this community. We have an astronomically uh, accelerated uh, drug and alcohol abuse rate in this community. Now, these aren't coincidences. These are the results of people constantly being fed the messages that they are not good enough, that they are uh, in danger, that they are not wanted, that they're hated, that they're, you know. And so I want people to see this isn't uh, reality anymore. It doesn't have to be this way. I'm sober. I, I, I just celebrated more than four years of sobriety. My life has changed tremendously for the better. I wish what I have and, and what has happened to me for every other person who's ever felt like they weren't good enough or that they were a victim or that set yourself free. I want these people to be liberated. And it can happen. It should happen. But they're constantly getting messages from their media, from their party, the Democratic Party, that we're still living in the past. And, wouldn't the Democrat Party cease to be, that is, cease to exist, but for the balkanization of Americans, but for the, the victimization of Americans, but for trashing America? And yet I see people by the tens of billions who would pour into this country if we allowed them to pour into this country. Gay people, straight people, black people, brown people, white people, all people. We're such an oppressive, horrific country right. that we can't keep people out. We'll be right back. Brandon Strzok, you didn't go to college. No. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, now I think it's a good thing. Why is that? <laughs> because I never got indoctrinated. I mean, I, I, I actually think that that's probably part of the reason I was able to get out alive the way that I was and, and hopefully encourage a lot of other people to get out as well. Um, you know, I hear all the time now that these co colleges and universities are just becoming more and more indoctrination camps, I think, than institutions of learning. And I have to believe that that's true because I have seen with my own eyes the way that this sort of liberal, excuse me for saying, but cancer has overtaken the minds of young people. I mean, they can't even carry on a conversation Have you anymore. spoken in any college campuses yet? Oh, I will be. It appears that when conservatives simply try to speak at universities and colleges all over the country, it creates a violent response. Mm -hmm. um, which goes to the issue of academic freedom and free speech. There doesn't really seem to be academic freedom and free speech in a lot of our campuses in this country. Um, your walk away boomer, are you going to focus somewhat on colleges and universities? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we have to kind of go into the belly of the beast in many, many respects. So yes, young people are absolutely a demographic that we must speak to, and we will get into colleges and, and high schools, but there are a lot of other initiatives. We're using very creative means to try to communicate with people, and I think this is why we've been so successful. I mean, we have an enormous amount of black people and brown people in this campaign, and the reason why, I think, is because we're communicating with people in ways that I think typical conservatives and Republicans never have before. One instance is um, around uh, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, we put out a 35-minute short film documentary that we made. So with this campaign, as I told you before, it started as video testimonials, people telling their stories. So we had a Hollywood film producer in our campaign. His name's Mike Boss. He uh, created a 35-minute, we call it a documonial, testimonial documentary using the testimonials of 20 black Americans. And he threaded them together to create this unbelievable, compelling sort of story about the black experience in, in America, how uh, this particular community is indoctrinated into voting Democrat, telling the true st history of the KKK, talking about Planned Parenthood, talking about faith and religion and how these things play in. We call it the Great Awakening, Breaking the Chains of the Democratic Party. We put it out, it's available for people to watch on YouTube for free anytime that they want. And so we put this out and it's had phenomenal response. And so what we're gonna do now with that film is actually rent out theaters across the country, raise the money so that people can come and watch it for free and fill the, the theater with as many you know, people of color as we can and have a panel of walkaway people who after the movie's over, we're gonna have like town hall style discussions and say, why are we still voting Democrat? And is this still serving us well? And I intend to do the same thing with the LGBT community. We're going to do uh, walk away LGBT town halls across the country, San Francisco, New York City, and really just have honest, frank discussions and say, listen, it's time to rethink our political motivations and proclivities. 
This is a widespread grassroots movement you're trying to create here. This issue of race, very interesting to me. The president was making progress in the black community. There was a poll, I think, back in August, I forget if it was Pew or Gallup, 21% favorability in the black community, particularly among black males. Mm -hmm. Then I noticed the media started pounding him as a racist, and he's yes. a racist, and bringing the race barkers on from various universities and colleges and Capitol Hill. He's a racist, he's a racist, he's a racist. And I'm sitting and thinking, what the hell has he done that's racist? I can't think of a single thing. No. Can you? No, and, and then they underreport all of the amazing things that he does do. I mean, he's done these uh, incredible sort of uh, celebrations and things at the White House during Black History Month. Uh, he, the, the First Step uh, Act, I think, is an incredible thing that will really, really help the black family in America. Uh, he's already, you know, uh, pardoned people who got these uh, crazy life sentences for, for kind of, you know, smaller petty crimes, certainly things that didn't ex uh, uh, warrant a life sentence. He's done amazing things to try to help the black community. And, but if they need to keep these people thinking that he's a racist. And isn't that what you're up against? Yeah. Exactly that. That is, we can't have a Clarence Thomas. Right. A man who thinks for himself and who believes in our founding principles, liberty. Right. We can't have people who step out, whether it's a gay person, a black person, a Latino person, a Jewish person. They, they've called him anti-Semitic, despite the fact he's the greatest president in terms of Israel's uh, uh, support, and his daughter is an Orthodox Jew, and he's got Jewish, and yet this mantra goes on and on and on. Isn't this what you're gonna be up against, the whole walk away movement? Perhaps it is, but I, I'm really not concerned about it. I mean, if they think they're gonna come after me, they've got the wrong guy, because I don't quit, I don't give up, I, I, I'm, it, endlessly creative. I mean, these are the, the, the means that I use to communicate with people that have been very effective. And if they're going to try to sabotage me, I will outfox them at every turn. And I have no doubt you will. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, almost every weeknight you can watch Levin TV. Give us a call at 844-LEVIN-TV, 844-LEVIN-TV to join us or go to blazetv.com slash mark, blazetv.com slash mark. We have a great conservative digital TV community there, and I hope you'll join us. We'll be right back. We are not out there pushing victimhood. You're not out there pushing a left-wing agenda. Um, so let me make a guess. You're not invited on CNN. <laughs> no. You're not invited on MSNBC. No. There's not a full page spread in any style section in the Washington Post or anything like that. Oh, there is. Oh, but against you? Well, so what it is, is once the campaign got to the point where it was no longer ignorable by the liberal media, they did start telling stories about us, but what they said was that this was a campaign that was conjured up by Vladimir Putin, uh, that it's supported by Russian... How's he doing, by the way? And that it's a Russian yeah. propaganda campaign. It, he's good, he's good. He and I have an on-again, off-again yeah. thing. Don't yeah. we all? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Depends on his mood. Yeah. Uh, no, so that's how they tell the story. They, they tell people that Walk Away is a Russian propaganda campaign that it was designed to hurt Democrats and that, you know, but see, this is how insidious and sneaky they are. They do this so that they can then have an excuse to start suppressing more conservatives on social media, you know, so they can say, ah, that walkaway hashtag, that's that Russian propaganda thing. We have to suppress this account. We have to suppress that account. It's all tied together and it's very, very You know insidious. what the Yush Russian propaganda thing used to be? What? The Democrat Party. Oh, really? For almost their entire modern existence. Oh. They tried to undermine Reagan who was trying to defeat the Soviets. Right. Uh, and they were behind these movements, the nuclear freeze movement and other movements that were intended to tie the hands of the United States military. And also uh, their little offshoots, the satellite countries that the Soviets were backing. Uh, Nancy Pelosi went to Syria. That was a, uh, against the will of uh, President George W. Bush. A speaker, Jim Wright, went and visited Daniel Ortega in Nicaragua, another communist uh, genocidal maniac. Mm. Uh, she was asked, uh, he was asked not to do that by Ronald Reagan. Ted Kennedy 
communicated with the Kremlin because he wanted to defeat Ronald Reagan in 1984. Meanwhile, you and I somehow are influenced by <laughs> Vladimir Putin. Right. And, and, you know, we, we're not even sure how to spell his name. Right. We're influenced by Vladimir Putin. Well, see, so when this happened to me, I, it was one, another time in my life where I said, okay, so we're getting so, you know, something thrown at us. Let's spin it and make it into a positive. This is what I say. I will outfox them every time. So I said, okay, if they're going to call my campaign Russian propaganda and all of the people in it Russian bots, let's just show them the truth. And so we put together a march on Washington that we did 10 days before the midterm elections. We raised a, an enormous amount of money through the contributions of hardworking Americans that gave $20, $30. We put together a spectacular march 10 days before the midterm elections. We even uh, devised a, uh, a, a mascot for the campaign of Russian bot whose name is uh, Uranium One. <laughs> and. Uh, and then the, the, the march was actually so successful and amazing that I got a tweet from this gentleman here, Mr. President, President Donald Trump, who said, walk away from the Democrat movement marches today in D.C. Congratulations to Brandon Strzok for starting something very special. Amazing. So he, he's, you know, for all the attacks on this man, he's very human. He personalizes issues. People can identify with him which the media cannot. They live in a bubble. They're very confounded by this, man. They're confused because you know why? Because they don't understand America. Right. And they don't understand Americans. They all live and work inside the Beltway or on the West Coast. They're really not familiar with what goes on between the coasts, I don't think. If people want to contact you or your organization or get involved somehow, because I think a lot of our viewers might, where do they go? Well, walkawaycampaign.com for right now, and we actually are working on a new website which we'll be rolling out in two months under the same exact domain, so that won't change. But in, our goal is to get people off of Facebook because of suppression, things like that. So we're going to have a very sophisticated website uh, probably around the month of May. But for the time being, Walk Away Campaign is still sort of has our place marker sort of website. And there's lots of information there about how people, if they'd like to volunteer, uh, if they'd like to help contribute, because we are grassroots. We, I mean, we are, we're kind of living on a wing and a prayer, and we have big plans. All right. We'll be right back. Brandon Strzok future of the country. You see fairly radical people announcing to be the Democrat nominee. I mean, so radical that they're starting to leave Bernie Sanders in the dust. And they're talking about nationalizing health care, nationalizing education, really. That's what free education is all about. Open borders, wealth taxes, massive marginal tax rates, things that are really contrary to, to the American experiment. Um, so a lot of people are very worried about this. How do you see the future of the country? How do you see the, the, uh, the progress of the country? Well, I am optimistic. I, I, I'm eternally optimistic, I think, about, first of all, the nature of people, and I think the, the direction that our country is going to go in, in general. What I think is that as the Democratic Party and the ideology of liberalism becomes more extreme, more fringe, more left, more and more people are being turned off and they're starting to have their eyes opened. And the media itself, I think, is becoming more desperate. These, uh, you know, the constant calls of racism, the constant calls of bigotry, and, and, and jumping the gun so often as we see now with all of these hate crime hoaxes and stuff, and they, they attack and then it turns out that, oh, well, we got the story wrong. I mean, it's like this is happening on an almost daily basis now. And so people are starting to have their eyes open more and more and more. And when the Kavanaugh hearings happened, we had a huge second wave of testimonials in our campaign. And then it happened again, you know, with uh, Jussie Smollett and all of these different things that are happening. So I think that more and more people are going to continue to walk away. But what is paramount is that nobody can be complacent at this point. Nobody. The era of the silent majority is over. And I can't state this enough. It is time for the silent majority to become unsilent. Everyone must speak up. Everyone must def defend their principles and defend this country. And I think it's also important, perhaps the most important thing, is for conservatives to continue to speak up and let people know, black people, brown people, LGBT people, there is a seat at the table for them over on the right. That conservatism is for everybody. That empowering the individual is for all people, regardless of race, regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of gender. Because these people on the left are not getting that message. They're getting the opposite message. But I think if they knew that, it's the values of conservatism that make so much more sense than the ideology of liberalism. And so I think if people knew that they had a safe seat on the right, they would 
certainly be willing to come over. Because yes, socialism is, is terrible for everybody. And it's, and it's probably, in the end, worst for people of color and other marginalized uh, minorities. What you're saying is so true. And yet it's a big problem in the Republican Party. Republicans don't know how to talk. No. If they would just go out there and be conservatives, principled conservatives, constitutionalists, talk about the individual, talk about liberty, talk about our founding principles, and explain to the people, as Reagan did, the shining city on the hill, the magnificent things, the positive things, the great things we have done, the Industrial Revolution. Right. You have running water, you have electricity, you have vehicles, you have food on the table. That didn't come from government. It right. didn't come from socialism. It didn't come from Bernie Sanders. It came from we the people. Right. And we do not explain that. We do not engage with the hard left. Agreed. And I also think that there's not enough communication uh, between, you know, kind of identity lines for whatever reason. I, I understand that these things can be uncomfortable for some people, but, you know, I myself, I have absolutely no apprehension about going into an auditorium where I'm the only white person in the room and addressing an auditorium filled with black people. Black people are just people. Brown people are just be We just talk to each other the same way we talk. Black people love good ideas just as much as white people love right. good ideas. And, and, and uh, conservatism is filled with good ideas. So we just need to be having these conversations. It's a great pleasure. Wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you. This has been amazing. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, join us next week on Life, Liberty, and Levin. <laughs>